Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to briefly show you guys how you can set up custom movement controls inside of Godot. So we're going to be making a simple character move with WASD controls. I'm going to start by going ahead and creating the character. So let's go ahead and create a root node here. If you don't see this, you could go ahead and create a brand new scene by going to scene, new scene, and that'll basically get you to the same empty scene page. And we can create the node as a 2D scene. And what I'm going to do, rather than creating the scene starting with a basic 2D scene node, is I'm going to go down here to other node, and we're going to type in kinematic body 2D. And this is going to give us a physics body where we control through code how it's going to move within the game world. So I'll go ahead and create that. Now, you'll notice immediately there is this exclamation mark to have a collision shape 2D attached to this. Uh, so I'm going to right click on the kinematic body 2D and attach a child node and we're going to do collision shape 2D. So let's go ahead and add that there. I'll rename this kinematic body 2D to player and let's also give the player a sprite as a child node. So I'm going to right click on the player and do add child node. Let's type in sprite. So this is going to be a 2D node. So I'll double click that, add it in there. So the sprite is going to hold the texture for our character. I'll just use this lifeheart.png as a placeholder. I'll drag that into texture. Any PNG will do. And we can zoom in and see the sprite rendering for our character object. Now, assuming you want the character to be able to collide with other objects, you'll need to give the collision shape 2D an actual shape. So you can click on that, go to the inspector, and then on the right, we'll just do new, and I'll do a circle shape for simplicity. And I'll click on the handle for the circle and make it roughly the size of this heart right here. Okay, next for actually making it move, we have to attach a script to the player. So I'm going to left click on the player and then I'm going to hit attach new script up here and we'll just create player.gd. You can store that wherever you want if you have any nested folders in your project. So I'll go ahead and hit create here. So in order to make the character move here, I'm going to first delete all of this extra text here. And then we're going to set up a function called physics process. So I'm going to type in func for function here and then underscore physics process. And you can kind of see it pop up there already. I'll just hit enter to auto complete it. And you can see that delta is a parameter. Delta is the time since the physics process has been run. So that would generally be the duration of one frame in the game since the physics process would run on every frame. So now on every frame, we basically need to move the character depending on our input. So the first thing we're going to need to get here is going to be the input from the player. Uh, what direction should it be going in basically. So we can check how the player can do input in the game by going up to project and then project settings and then input map. That's the second tab over here. So you can see there's a bunch of default options here, notably UI left, UI right, UI up and UI down. Now you can see here that left, right, up and down, th those are the arrow keys on your keyboard are set as one of the possible imports. Uh, but if you want to use WASD controls instead, then you would go over here to the right, add event, add key, and then for left, that would be A, and then hit OK. And you can see that key pops up here as another option. If you'd like, you can delete uh, left up here if you no longer want the arrow keys to be an option for moving your character. And we'll just do the same thing for UI right over here, add key, and then press D for right. And then for up, we'll do add key. W for up, and then lastly, down. So add key and then S for down. So that sets up the WASD inputs. Now we need to get this and use it for actually moving the character. So a good way to get the left right input for the movement is going to be to look at the right key being pressed down and the left key being pressed down, looking at their action strength and calculating a value between the two. So if both are pressed on the keyboard, uh, that would come out to zero. If UI left is pressed, then that would be negative one because you're going left on the screen. And then positive one for UI right. So how this would look like in code would be to create a variable for the directional input. So I'll just call this directional underscore input here. And we'll start this off as a vector 2.0. So a vector 2 has two values. And when you create it as a dot zero vector, that means both values are zero. And then we'll start setting the individual values. So directional input dot x, 
which we'll use for horizontal movement, is going to be getting from the input. So this is uh, capital for the first character here. So this is the input in the Godot engine itself. And then there's a function on it called get action strength. So in other words, how much is the player pressing on that particular action? Now on a keyboard, I think this can only have two values zero and one but depending on the input if it's like a stick input that might be different so get input action strength and we want ui right here because we're still using the default names of the actions but if you create any custom actions you would just put the name in here as a string so we're getting the value of the ui right and then we need to get the uh, action strength of the ui left so i have a subtraction marker here we're subtracting the UI left once again, because if we want to go left, we want it to be in the negative direction. This get action strength will be a value between zero and one. So we want the negative value of that. Um, so if both of these are one, then the total value will be zero and the character shouldn't move anywhere. But otherwise it's going to be positive one if you're pressing right down or negative one for UI left. So then for the Y directional input, we do basically the same thing. Directional input dot Y equals input dot get action strength. We'll do UI down here and then negative import action for UI up. So the reason why we use UI up for the negative value is because going up on the screen towards the top of the screen is actually negative values and going down is going to give you your positive values. So we want UI down to be positive because down is the positive value in the Y axis. So now we have our direction and we need to move that direction in a particular speed. So we can go up to the top here and create a speed variable. I'm going to type in export and let's make it a float, I guess. That's just a number with a decimal point. Variable movement speed. And we can hit equals default this as, let's say, a hundred movement underscore speed. And I'll just default this to a hundred. So when you make it an export variable, if you click back on your player, you can see that it exposes that variable so that you can edit it for each instance of the object. So you can change that number here uh, to have something different from the default. So now we just need to move the character. So we can do that with one of two functions. So there's one called move and collide, and then there's move and slide. So if you want the character, when it comes up against an angled surface, a collision with an angle, to be able to slide along that object, then you would do move and slide. If you want it to stop completely when it bumps into something, then you would use move and collide instead. So I'm going to use move and slide. So with this function, we just need to do the directional input and multiply that by the movement speed. So we have a direction and a magnitude of value for our character to move. And just to note, if you did it the other way, so that would be move and collide, then you would do directional import times movement speed. And then you would also need to throw in the delta. So this is the time since the last frame. Move and slide automatically accounts for the delta without you having to put it in. But move and collide doesn't. I'm not totally sure why the reason is, uh, but they do say that in the doc. But they do mention that in the documentation. So you don't need the delta if you're using move and slide. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control S now. We'll save this scene as a .tscn file. You can store it wherever you want in your project. And now we can go ahead and hit play. So here we can see I haven't selected a default scene. I'll just quickly go ahead and make a new scene. This will be a 2D scene, and I'll rename this world. And then I'm going to create an instance of the player that we've been creating. So I'm going to find that player scene, put it in there. Now the player's in the world. Let's save the world as its own scene. You could call it level if you wanted or whatever. And let's go ahead and hit play. Select. We're going to select the world. And now our game's going to launch. So. Uh, well, we can see in the top left, the heart character is up there. Let's move with WASD. Okay, look at that. We can move. So um, obviously, that's really hard to see. So I'm going to go ahead and make a couple changes real quick. First off, I'm going to move the player inwards. Okay, so now I'd also like the world to look a little bigger on the screen. So I'm going to go up to Project, Project Settings, uh, Find Display and Window. And I'm going to take the width height and shrink those down for a pixel art game. And then for test width and test height, I'm going to bump that up to, let's say, 1280 by 
uh, 720p, then go down, make sure that stretch mode is set to 2D. And now when we hit play, it should uh, pop up a lot larger than it is in the background. So uh, there we have our little heart there and we can move around. OK, so lastly, if you want to take the character's movement and make it so that it accelerates up to a max speed, we can do that really quickly, changing the code a little bit. So I'm going to go into the player. So we have move and slide directional input times movement speed. So instead of immediately putting this in at the maximum move and slide value on every frame, what we can do is have a current velocity variable. So up here, I'm going to make a variable for velocity, and this is going to start as a vector 2.0. And we're going to increase this up to our movement speed a certain amount every frame uh, based on the delta, the time between frames so that it's consistent if the frames take longer to render than one another. So uh, let's make another variable, export float, and I'll just call this acceleration. And we can set it to, I don't know, something arbitrary like 200 for now. Of course, you can always customize your values later. So what we're going to want to do down here is check if there's directional input. And if there is, we're going to accelerate towards the max speed uh, based on the directional input. So if directional input does not equal vector 2.0 then we're going to take the velocity and we're going to have that set to velocity dot move toward so this is basically going to move the velocity vector in an amount uh, towards a certain direction so the target velocity that we're moving toward is going to be what we have down here so directional input times movement speed. I'll just cut that and put it up there. And then the amount we want to move towards that is going to be acceleration times delta. So now instead of move and slide the directional input times movement speed, we're going to move and slide the current velocity. So this is going to be a number that changes on uh, basically every frame that we try to move. Now, if there is no directional input, you might want to slow the character down to zero. Otherwise, if you let go of your controls, it's just going to keep sliding in the direction it was currently. So we could actually hit play and go ahead and show that. So hit play. OK, so right now we have no movement. But if I try to accelerate, well, as soon as I let go, it just keeps sliding. Now, if you've ever seen something like, I don't know, a Pokemon or Tim Tim ice puzzle, then that might actually be a desired movement in certain circumstances. But uh, generally, you would want there to be friction so the character slows down to zero. So in the script, we can add in another variable. So export float var friction. So this is just going to be how much you want it to slow down when there's no input. So if we do else here, basically, this will be true when the directional input is zero, meaning there's no player input, and we're just going to let the velocity decrease towards zero. So velocity equals velocity move toward. OK, and we want this to basically go back to zero. So vector two dot zero. And the amount we want this to move is going to be the friction. And I believe we're going to want to throw in delta here as well to make sure that the friction amount is consistent with the time between frames. So our velocity is now going to decrease towards zero. If there is no player input, we can go ahead and hit play here. Let's just test that one more time. OK, so we can see the movement stops. So we just got to tweak the numbers. So I could customize it up here, but I'll show you how to do it in the inspector. If we left click on the player, I'll just increase the friction here to 500. So now if we let go, the character is going to stop a lot faster than before. But note, if we go look at the script, it still says 50 here. So the default value is overwritten by this 500. And if we want to reset to the default value in the script, we can always hit this reset icon here. So that resets it back to 50. And you can have whatever custom values you want there. So that's basically in a nutshell how you can do some basic 2D movement inside of Godot. One final thing I want to show is uh, how you can add in custom actions. So if we go to project, project settings, input map, uh, you can see at the top here, you can add an action. So if later you maybe have some custom movement like a jump key, uh, then you can type in action here, uh, give it a name. So I'm calling it jump, add. And then for that jump key, uh, we go down here, we, we click on the plus, hit key, and then just pick your jump key. So I'll do space, hit OK. And now we have a jump key. 
So now in the same way, if we want to get any other import for our character, uh, we can use this built-in input and then get the name of the new action and see if it's being pressed with get action strength. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video on how to do basic character movement inside of Godot. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see all of you in my future video content.